Good evening and welcome back to our second hour of Nightline. I am your host, Mary Sloan, and this is my co-host, Tony Suchka, who is my daughter. And we've just had a wonderful first hour, haven't yes. we? Yes. Uh, we dealt with alignment with uh, Tony's pastor's wife, Wendy Norris. What a, you know, I really felt the anointing when she was sitting here talking, Tony. And, uh, you know, when she was talking about how God spoke to her, I remember your daddy years ago, he said he always prayed, God, speak to me, speak to me, God. And he was in a church one night, and something came in that building, that church, and he's, it scared him so bad. He said, oh, no, God, I don't know if I can take it. Because God is a holy God. His yeah. presence is awesome. And we can't even begin to fathom what it's like for God to speak to us. And when Wendy was even sitting here talking, oh, I just felt it myself. I felt such an anointing here. So... During this last, uh, well, we got 30 minutes here, but during this last uh, 30 minutes, we want you to uh, call a friend and have them to tune in and uh, tell them that they are, we got something clean in the air going on here. And Tony, you've got our scripture reference for us tonight. Again. Yes, it's Psalms 28, verse 7 and 8. It says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in Him, and I am helped. Therefore... My heart greatly rejoiced, and with my song I will praise Him. The Lord is their strength, and He is the saving strength of His anointed. And, you know, I go back to always saying, He says, you know, He is the I Am. And I always go back to, He says, I am your strength. I am your help. So, and when Sherry was talking about be, being still and what that meant when she studied it, it just took me back to resting in Him mm -hmm. and allowing Him to, I like the word she's propel us forward. Resting in Him and allowing Him to do the work and lead us through. And I right. really like that. And you know, it's not about behavior modification. It's just about aligning that soulish realm where you can hear from God. Sherry and I were talking about last night, there's times that you just want to hear from God, you know, and you align yourself to do that. We're excited about this half hour tonight. And we're going to go to Laura for a song. And isn't she doing good tonight? Oh, Tony? she's The minute awesome. we heard her, we went, awesome. wow. Yes. <laughs> she's going to be singing closer for us tonight. I spent so many years on the verge of giving up wondering if the steps I took would ever lead me far enough but he sent me to realize I'm further than I once was I just keep saying out loud I'm getting Closer, closer to you, Lord. I haven't seen you, but I know I know you more. I keep on walking, still have miles to go. But as I look back on my long and narrow road, I'm getting. I've been stumbling through the dark, feeling my way around. I'm trying to be that light that I've heard so much about. But though I see just dimly, your light is always leading. I'll follow all the way. Oh, 
as I look back on my long and narrow road, I'm getting closer, and you're getting closer, you're getting Getting closer. Are we getting closer to Him? I want to talk to you for just a few minutes from a title that God gave me. The title is I Do. You hear that when you're getting married in the marriage ceremony. That's two people coming in alignment with each other when you say I do. You better come in alignment quick when you say I do. It's not I do till I can do better. You got to do it quickly is what I'm talking about. Alignment. What does it mean? This is what it means. It means a position of agreement. In other words, when I come in alignment with my husband, I am agreeing with him, I'm going to go where you go. Wherever you go, I'll go. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my God, will be my people. I want to ask you a question. Have you come in alignment with your God? Is wherever he is going, is that where you're going? Because see, if not, then that means that there's division. That means that you're not in alignment yet. That's what it's talking about, really, being married to God. That's important. I began to study and I said, God, where do you want to go with tonight? What do you want to do? And God took me to Daniel of all places. I don't know why he does stuff like that to me, but he does. He took me to Daniel 11 and 32. What I want to do is I want to extrapolate something out of a scripture. I'm not going to theologically try to explain it because it won't give me enough time. If it gave me time, I could. But I don't want to theologically explain it. What I really want to do is I want to extrapolate something out and I want to take just a few key words and I want to talk about the alignment of God. I'm not even going to read the whole verse as a matter of fact. Daniel 11:32 says it like this, but the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits knowing God being strong and doing no be do I began to ask God about it and I said God you need to tell me show me what you're talking about check this out we grow weary in well-doing very quickly why because we don't first know he said if you know me the people who know my God shall do so what is no we have been struggling to know God what we're doing is we're struggling to try to get his attention since the beginning of time we've been struggling to try to get his attention I got to tell you a little secret I struggle to try to get his attention too but can I tell you something you have his attention you had his attention before the very beginning of time before you were ever even born you had the attention of God so why do we struggle so to know him what does no mean I looked it up I'm going to I'm going back to school I'm taking Hebrew and, and, and I'm enjoying it very much I looked it up in the Hebrew what does the word no mean it means this it means to understand as Yahweh it means to know I am when Tony said I am earlier I thought look at you God already lining things up and putting things in alignment it means the people who know their God to know him as I am do you know him as I am because that's when your life comes into alignment when Moses stood before the burning bush and, and God told Moses he said I want you to go to Pharaoh and I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go well Moses didn't say anything he didn't fear Pharaoh he didn't fear what he was about to do he didn't do anything he just said okay I will but who are you who do I say and God simply said this God said I am that was all Moses needed to know he didn't even know anything else he came in alignment with I am at that moment so you don't have to know anything about God except know that I am. You have to know that he is. So how do I know that he is? I wanted to know that. I began to ask him. I said, God, I got to know that because I cannot be in alignment with you if I don't know that. Okay. So I began to look at it. And he said this. He said, those who know their God shall do or shall be strong. So out of my knowing comes my being. In him I move and have my being. We're trying to know God without in him having our being. Once you know him, then you can be. 
We're trying to be something, even, even in the church world, we're trying to be something without knowing God. I spent my whole life trying to be somebody that I was not because I didn't fit in, because I didn't like who I was, because I didn't like it, because I couldn't read, and, and because everybody told me everything, and I listened to everything that everybody said. But when I know God, when I met Him, when I finally met Him face to face, and I understood that in Him I have my being, in Him I found me. So you can't find you. You can't even know you. You can't know who you are until you know him. But in him, you'll find you. In him, you will align with who you are. And then you can do the plan that God has on your life. You can't do what God has for you to do if you don't know yourself in him. We've got to know ourselves in him. That's how we, in him, I move and breathe and have my being, those who know God, shall be strong, will never be strong without knowing him. As a matter of fact, he said it like this. He said, and we all with open face are beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, our being changed as I behold him. That's all I had to do is I just had to behold him. I didn't have to know the Greek and I didn't have to know the Hebrew. All I had to know was that I could just behold him because the one that I was beholding was beholding me. And in that, I was being changed. So if I know him, then I can in him move and breathe and have my being. Those who know God shall be strong and shall do exploits. You mean to tell me, God, that if I know you and then I can be in you and in you I can know who I be, then you mean to tell me that then I can do? See, we're trying to do without knowing. You, when you do without knowing, that's when we get into works. Because now all of a sudden I've made myself an entertainer. Now I'm trying to get his attention and I'm trying to entertain him. God is not looking for our entertainment. He just wants us to know him. Because then when I know him, then I can know who I be. Then I can, I can have my being in him. But I thought it interesting that in the Hebrew scripture it didn't say do exploits. It just said those who know their God shall be strong and do that's all it said was do. I've always loved the word exploits, but I, when I went to look it up, I couldn't find it because it wasn't there. And I asked God, I said, okay, God, what does do mean? What is it that we're supposed to do? When I know you, what am I supposed to do? I can't tell you how many people come to me and ask me, how did you know that that was the call of God on your life? How did you know that you were called to preach? How did you know that you were called to sing the gospel? How did you know? I, I, I didn't know that I was supposed to do anything. I just began to know him and he began to propel me. I didn't ask him for the call. I ran from it for many years. I didn't ask him for it. I just began to know him. See, we're searching for what we're supposed to do. But if you'll search for him, he will make you who you are supposed to be. And out of that, you will just do. It just happens. It just begins to fall in place. So I said, God, what does do mean? The word do actually means this. It means accomplish. What is it that you're trying to accomplish and can't seem to accomplish it? What is it that you're trying to make happen and cannot seem to make it happen? Can I tell you your accomplishment is in lining up with knowing him so that you can be what he called you to be. That's what the important thing is, is not trying to perform anything and not trying to work anything and not trying to get God's attention and not even trying to be good enough. Because can I tell you, you'll never be good enough. But I met a man called Jesus. And when I met this man called Jesus, he said, if you'll just let me teach you about my father, he said, in me, not only do I learn who I am, not only do I become, but can I tell you something? I didn't just find me in him, but I found him in me. I, I got hidden, if you will, in Christ Jesus. So now when the enemy comes, comes looking for me, people ask me all the time because they know my past. What do you do when your old friends come around? First of all, they can't find me anymore because can I tell you something? I am hidden in Christ Jesus. I got lined up with who I am. And when I got lined up with who I am and I began to know who he is, all of a sudden I'm not that girl anymore. So I don't have to fight that battle anymore. So when the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. And I don't have to raise the standard and I don't have to do anything. I just be. Are you having a problem doing? Because you don't know how to be. If you don't watch me, I'll preach in a heartbeat. And I said I wasn't going to do that tonight. I just want you to know that God loves you and that you're trying so hard, trying so hard to receive his love and to accept his love and to make yourself lovable enough. But I got news for you. Before you ever did that thing that you did, before you ever did that horrible thing and before you ever failed like you failed, he loved you already. 
He loves you in your failure. He loved me in my failure. And because he loved me in my failure, it brought me out of my failure. It gave me the hope. It gave me the strength. Everything that I have is in knowing who he is. All you have to do is get lined up. How did you, how'd you find that, Pastor? Let me tell you how I found it. I just got in his word. And I'm not a scholar. I didn't even know how to read. But if you have a hunger, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. I had a hunger to do better. And I, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't do better. But when I knew better, when I began to know him, he began to change everything in me. He began to change who I was. I love it when they see me walking in Walmart and they see there goes the preaching prostitute. It doesn't bother me anymore. It used to bother me, but it doesn't bother me anymore because I'm not that girl anymore. I'm a whole new vessel. He said, I'll make you yet again another vessel if you can get your doing out of me. I didn't have to make me a new vessel because I couldn't paint me up and I couldn't fix me up enough, but I met a man who could. It's all in Christ Jesus. See, all you have to do is just ask him. I told him one day, I said, God, I don't even know how to come to you because to come to you, I got to be holy. And God said, you'll find your holiness in my son and not in anything that you do. Doesn't change the things that I do because there are still certain things that I do, but I do them out of a different place. It comes out of my knowing. If your doing is coming out of your doing, you're going to come up short every time and you will be exhausted because you cannot do enough. But when it comes out of your knowing him, then all of a sudden he is the fuel that propels you along your journey to where you're supposed to go. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Can't you hear right now? Can't you hear God walking in the garden after sin entered the garden? And he's saying, Adam, where are you? Where art thou, Adam? Don't you know God knew? He is God. He knew where Adam was. So why was he saying, Adam, where art thou? Can I tell you why? Because it wasn't really Adam that he was looking for. He was looking for himself. He was looking for the spirit of himself in Adam. It's not you that God is looking at. Are you in alignment with God? Can he see his spirit in you? Because when sin entered the garden, all of a sudden, God had to exit. But can I tell you how awesome it is to know that where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. That there is no sin that is sin enough. There is no pit that is deep enough. And that there is no mountain that is high enough that I can't get myself in alignment with God. You cannot bury me deep enough. Even though I make my bed in hell, David said, thou art there. Isn't that an awesome thing? To know that all you have to do is cry out. He said, if you'll cry out to me, I'll align myself with you. I will align. I didn't have to align myself with him. He aligned himself with me. Why? Because I was hungry. Because I asked him to. He said, if you ask me for a piece of bread, I won't give you a stone. Why? Because you're my children. You're my children. Somebody's been searching for him tonight. Somebody has been trying to accomplish something. You've been trying to reach a goal or you've been trying to reach a task. Or maybe you're trying to do something that someone else has placed on you to do. Be still for a few minutes. Don't listen to what everybody else tells you that you're supposed to do. But learn who he is. And out of that knowing, you will just begin to do. You will just begin to accomplish. Everything that you want to accomplish, you will accomplish it in him. There's no dream that is too big. There's no dream that is too far-fetched that you cannot reach it through knowing God. I encourage you to keep dreaming. I encourage you to keep moving forward. Do those things that you cannot do. Those who know their God shall be strong and shall do great exploits. God has got a plan and a purpose for your life. He has something for you tonight. That's why you tuned in. Because he had to tell you, all you have to do is know me. Can you get in alignment with him? How about introducing yourself to him all over again and say, God, let's start this thing all over again. I'm not coming to you with a false pretense. I'm telling you, I come to you in the name of your son. And that's all he asked. He said, come boldly before the throne room of grace that you may obtain help and find mercy in your time of need. Tonight you need him. He's watching you. He is calling for you, and he's just telling you, just line up with me. Just line up with me, and everything that you ever want to be, you will be it in me. I bless you. I thank you for watching. 
I thank you for listening because God is speaking to you tonight. And I know it because I feel it in my spirit. Somebody wants to do something that you simply could not do. God said, just stand still for a few minutes. I'm about to propel you further than you ever dreamed that you could go. He's the jet fuel that propels you into your future. Your future is bright with him. I don't care what your past was. I don't even care what your now is. I can tell you right now, your future is bright with your almighty God. Just know him tonight. Join us, please, if you will, as we go to Laura as she sings right now. Someday we will see you face to face And someday it will all be clear Until then life is more than just getting by we can live in your presence right now i feel your love surround me right now you wrap your arms around me and i see the invisible through eyes of faith and i rest in accepted totally and today you are pleased with me I receive this gift of life you offer me I can live in your presence right now I feel your love surround me tell you what I feel the anointing yes. well right now we can rest in his arm and I was just looking at this scripture here Matthew eleven twenty eight says come to me and I'll give you rest I'll give you rest mm -hmm. are you in turmoil tonight 
Do you feel like your life just goes around and around and you never get anywhere? It's so simple. He says, come to me and I'll give you rest. And I was just thinking about these words today of a song that I'd written called Rest. You talked about rest. She's singing about rest. Mm -hmm. It says, rest within his arms. He says, are you hungry? He will feed you. Are you thirsty? Take a drink. A great supply is waiting. It's more than you can think. His grace reaches out with freedom. His love is never ending. He wants to hold you in His arms and let you know that your life is mending. And that's what He wants to do here tonight. He just wants you to just give it all to Him as they say, give it all, give it all to Jesus. And we've had people to call in here tonight and, and uh, they need prayer. We need people agreeing with us tonight that their needs will be met. Tony, share two or three of those prayer requests yeah, with just, us. Um, Jessica needs uh, prayer. Johnny is sick. We've got um, families that need salvation. Um, we have a daughter who's in the hospital with pneumonia that needs healing. Um, someone needs healing for their eyes. A four-year-old that can't walk. Um, there's just many of yes, them. Lots yes. of healing and salvations. Well, we just want to end the hour with prayer and be sure and, and join us next weekend for our Sherry's three-day meeting, March 18th, 19th, and 20th. And Sherry, just, just go out and let's just have prayer here tonight, okay, for these needs. Father, we thank you. Every single need that has been brought tonight, yes. every person that has called in, God, you know the answer. I ask you, Lord, for healing. I ask you for miracles, God, that you bring in our lost loved ones. You promised us our seed, God. I ask you for salvations. God, we've sown the word tonight, and it cannot go out void. But some are going to sow, and then some are going to water, and then others are going to reap the, the harvest, God. So I ask you that you bring a great increase, Father. I ask you, Lord, that you, that you would touch our nation tonight, God, that you would bring us together under the umbrella of prayer. God, cause us to come together in one mind and in one accord that we might believe. I ask you, Lord, for our men and our women in the military who are fighting for our country. God, I ask you, Lord, that you bless them and that you bless their families, Father, as they stay here in the States and they await their loved ones, God. I thank you, Father, for every I thank you for this station, God, for this station that has stood strong and that they are broadcasting the gospel around the world. I bless you for them. Bless their efforts, God, and cause it to multiply in Jesus.